a plastic crisis why this is a crisis and why this is seen in particularly in patients with chronic hemolytic anemia like sickle cell anemia or hereditary spherocytosis these are the two questions which we like to answer in this session and i will start with the second question first that why a plastic crisis is not happening <clears throat> in you and me due to parvarus b19 infection but why it is particularly happening in patients with chronic hemolytic anemias like uh, sickle cell anemia or hereditary spherocytosis so the idea is this that hemolytic anemia we just start with some basics of hemolytic anemia need to be understood hemolytic anemia basically means that your bone marrow is producing uh, there is no problem in the production of the rbcs in the bone marrow the bone marrow is producing rbcs but when this rbcs are coming from the bone marrow to the periphery they are getting destroyed by some process uh, they might be destroyed by let's say some intrinsic problem in the rbc or some extrinsic problem in the rbc the thing is that their average lifespan of the rbc get decreased in the hemolytic anemia this is a characteristic feature and this is very important to understand the concept of hemolytic crisis also so normally we know that rbcs live for 120 days that means 4 months but what happens in patients with uh, hemolytic anemia the average lifespan of rbc decreases it is usually ranges from 10 days 15 days to 50 10 to 50 days but they are much much less compared to a healthy RBC, a healthy patient's RBC, like 120 days or 4 months. So what happens in hemolytic anemia? To compensate for that, the bone marrow increases the output of RBC 5 to 8 times typically because peripherally the RBCs are getting destroyed when it's coming out of the bone marrow and to compensate that for that, bone marrow increases the RBC production. That's why you usually get high reticulocyte count in the hemolytic anemia. Now I'm coming to the topic, what is happening in aplastic crisis. Now, Let's imagine that a patient with hemolytic anemia, chronic hemolytic anemia, whose RBC's average lifespan on the periphery is very less, 10 days, 15 days, he gets also gets infected by, he or she also gets infected by parvovirus B19. And parvovirus B19, what does it, what it normally does, it particularly infects only the RBC precursors, not the WBC precursors, not the platelet precursors, only the RBC precursors. So what would happen? And this infection stays for a is for a short span of time. It's really two three weeks. Then that it effects goes away. So for two three weeks, what would happen in the bone marrow? All the RBC precursors which are infected by the uh, this parvovirus B19, they would be destroyed, and there would be no production. There would be stoppage of production of RBC for two three weeks. And I already mentioned in chronic hemolytic anemia, the average lifespan of RBC is very less usually 15, 20 days or 10, 15 days. So what is happening? Imagine in a situation, a patient with chronic hemolytic anemia, his RBCs are getting, they're surviving only for 10, 15 days. And normally bone marrow produces more RBC to compensate for that. But in this patient, what is happening? RBCs, these RBCs, which are there on the peripheral blood, they only stay for 10, 15 days, let's say. And for 10, 15 days, your bone marrow has also stopped producing any RBC. So normally what happens is that bone marrow usually means compensate for that. But bone marrow is even for 10-15 days there is a complete production. The, the, the factory has been completely shut down. There is no production of RBCs happening in the bone marrow. So what is going to happen? There will be a crisis situation would evolve. Because on the peripheral blood you don't have any, not enough RBC. And your bone marrow is also not producing RBCs temporarily for 2-3 weeks let's say. So you'd, there will be a sudden decrease, sudden decrease in the hemoglobin level in the patient with severe reticulocytopenia and that would create an emergency situation acute situation uh, crisis situation which is called aplastic crisis so this aplastic crisis is typically seen in patient with chronic hemolytic anemia like sickle cell anemia and hereditary spherocytosis and what is the explanation for that the explanation is that that in aplastic hereditary spherocytosis or the sickle cell anemia these patients with Hemolytic anemia, the RBC's lifespan is very much decreased. That is the explanation. In you and me, even aplastic uh, crisis cannot occur in that way. You understand? Because we, if I am get infected by, let's say, parvovirus B19, and their effect would only stay for two, three weeks, that I am my bone marrow is not producing any RBC. But still, my RBCs, which are there on the peripheral blood, there will be enough RBCs because they would live for normally 120 days. So I would not be affected by that. But in a patient with chronic hemolytic anemia, RBCs are surviving only for less number of days that's why it is creating a crisis 
The next thing I would like to touch that what is the difference between aplastic crisis and aplastic anemia. Aplastic crisis, as I just now mentioned, is only affecting RBC cell line. It's not affecting the all three cell lines. So, and it's a transient decrease in the RBC production because RBC precursors get infected by parviral binet. It is a typical cause. On the other side, aplastic anemia, we already know that it is a basically a problem of loss of hematopoietic stem cell. So there is basically a decrease of the uh, all three cell line actually. There's a production, decreased production as the hematopoietic stem cell is lost. So there's no production of RBC, no production of platelets, or no production of granulocyte. So that's that resulting in low bone marrow cellularity and ultimately it is culminating in pancytopenia on the peripheral blood. It is affecting all the three cell lines typically. But here what is happening is only affecting RBC. There will be only anemia, but the WC cell line platelets, their count will be unaffected in the aplastic crisis. And it is usually temporary for a few weeks, then it goes away. And it's typically seen in aplastic crisis, it's seen in the patients with chronic hemolytic anemia. This is the fundamental difference between aplastic crisis and aplastic anemia. I hope you find it useful. Thank you so much.